Hello friends, welcome to Susan and John MathTube and we are still solving 2076 Chaitra question paper and we are in question number 10 and like I did before uh, for your advantage I am going to uh, work out two more questions other than this and you can see something here it's a sales figure of an item before and after an advertisement was given so look at this uh, they have given per week or nothing is mentioned anyway it's a sales figure okay so before the advertisement they were able to sell 53 28 maybe in different shops the question is a little bit vague they have not mentioned any units no week uh, okay no problem so the before and after data is given now remember whenever they give you before and after in your syllabus you have only one test and that is called paired t test so remember in your syllabus to test the hypothesis of before and after event it is called paired t test and remember we are not uh, in before after event we are not talking about two different factories we are not talking about two different health drink we are not talking about two different parameters but it can be the mark of the same person before preparing for an examination and after preparing for an examination just imagine uh, someone took a mock test or some training was given so to solve before after problem there is only one test for you in the syllabus paired t test another important thing when we learned two mean testing that is the last video when we learned two mean testing i was talking about n1 and n2 but in pair t test remember you should not count this as n1 n2 the number of items will be n because this is the condition before and after for the same uh, maybe person or maybe a factory or maybe here the sales figure okay so let's start the first thing to write is let xi be the before data and yi be the after data and then you can write let di equal to xi minus yi be the difference now mu x means the population mean before the advertisement and mu y means the population mean after the advertisement and mu d is equal to mu x minus mu y means the difference mean okay now what we do is we have to read the question properly and like before i told you in two mean um, uh, two proportion even in paired it is better to write the alternative hypothesis first anyway I find this method easier so they are asking to test with the help of the sample data with the help of the sample data they are asking you to test whether the advertisement was effective now look at this advertisement is effective means the sales will be more advertisement is effective means the sales will be more so i'm going to write mu x mu y you're not allowed to change the positions and if the sales will be more then this is what we are trying to conclude so the null hypothesis of course will become mu x greater than or equal to mu y okay now let's put it in a standard format so h naught is mu x minus mu y greater than or equal to zero and h1 is mu x minus mu y less than 0 so clearly it's a left tail test now let's put it in the standard format of the pair t test because in pair t test we have a name for this so step one null hypothesis we call it mu d here look i have defined it mu d mu d greater than or equal to 0 and h1 mu d less than 0 so remember i told you in the last video uh, i love to write the generalized form 
um, but what i have seen in your question papers is 90% of the times they ask uh, delta value is equal to zero but remember i have seen a few question papers in which delta value is different and you can find such questions in the uh, workbook i have printed one or two questions in the workbook you can check where the delta value will be not equal to zero and always remember uh, in tu examination if you analyze the question paper year by year every year they will ask one or two questions differently in mathematics and in probability also so you can expect slight differences and sometimes they ask a lot of theory questions so be well prepared with the theory part that is as usual oh i forgot to write something it is left tailed now i guess alpha is given uh they have given the t value but there is a small mistake they have given the t value for two tailed test this is not a two tailed test because advertisement of effective means it is not not equal to yeah so anyway alpha is given to be 5 percentage <clears throat> no need to take alpha by 2 because we are not doing two tailed test now step number 3 calculation now look at this the calculation is slightly different from others we write xi yi and di is xi minus yi and one more thing this di can be negative or positive so first let's fill xi 53 and yi is 58 29 30 55 56 45 so the difference uh, minus 5 minus 1 1 minus 7 minus 6 7 and now we need two things so take your calculator and i want you to plug in put your calculator in one variable mode i want you to put your calculator in one variable mode and i want you to plug in di values and remember if it is negative plug in negative value if it is positive plug in positive value and calculate d bar d bar comes minus 1.833 you can double check and the sample standard deviation remember sample standard deviation i got 5.31 and now you can write t calculated uh, pair t test will be always small so uh, yeah the name of course is pair t test so the sample will be small so it is t calculated and the generalized formula is d bar minus delta by in brackets standard deviation of d by root n but normally delta will be zero so let's plug in all those things we got d bar sd etc etc i got the value minus 0.846 double check let's put it in a box okay now tell me what is step number 4 step number 4 is yeah tabulated value and we will tabulate exactly what we calculated here so that means t tabulated now i'll tell you once more the format of t distribution is uh, significance level comma degree of freedom significance level will be alpha provided it is left tailed or right tailed significance level should be taken as t alpha by 2 if it is a two tailed test that is alternative will show not equal to now another important thing about paired t test is do you remember the last video we did two mean testing for small sample and i told you the degree of freedom is n1 minus 1 plus n2 minus 1 unlike two mean testing in paired t test it is n minus 1 
because we are talking about the same parameter behaving before and after some modification is done. So we get t 0 0.05 and degree of freedom is 6 minus 1, 6 right, I will check it once more, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I do not know why they have given this value because this value is for two tailed. Once more, you can put it in the comment box. Effective means we have to check whether the sales has increased or not. Uh, is there any difference means we have to use not equal to. Did the advertisement create any difference means maybe the sales went down because you heard about advertisements which uh, sometimes hurt the sentiments and sales will go down. So if they ask is there any change we should do not equal to. Yeah, you can put it in the comment session if um, you have any doubts. Okay, anyway, I will go through the table and degree of freedom is 5, n minus 1, 5. Okay, let us go for the t table and in t table 0 0.05 and go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, got the value 2.015. You can double check it and you can uh, put your suggestions in the comment box. Okay, so 2.015. Okay, now what to do? Okay, draw the t distribution, a rough graph. It just looks like normal distribution and it is left tailed. So I am supposed to mark on the left side and always remember in normal and in t test, when you mark on the left side, you should mark negative and on the tail we write reject on the other part we write accept now step 5 is a very simple step it's a very basic step uh, you compare the calculated value okay so t calculated is um, what's that minus 0.846 okay minus 0.846 will be in the acceptance region right yeah so we write we accept H naught. Okay, we accept H naught means the advertisement didn't did not create much impact. So you can write like this: we are 95% confident that the advertisement did not create much impact. Okay, uh, that's the question they asked uh, in the last question paper I have. But for your advantage, I will show you two more questions. So I wanted to take a look at this question. This also before and after event because you can see without music, with music. So I will explain this question. Uh, one manager, uh, let us imagine a packing factory or any factory and one manager believes that music will enhance that manager believes that music will enhance um, what you call the working speed or something like that. So they selected six employees and asked them to work without music for a week. And then another week they put music and they measured the output. And now the manager wants to check whether productivity has changed look at the word changed change means we have to use not equal to did you get my point change can be positive change and negative change so change means it can be a positive one or a negative one so the manager just want to check whether there is any change now imagine if the question is like can you conclude that productivity has increased? That means the manager wants to check whether the output has become bigger or not. Okay. Anyway, uh, that's the main thing I wanted to show you. So I'll write, I'll tell you how it comes. Um, I'll write the alternative. So he's checking for change. So mu x not equal to mu y. It's explained here before after. And I have explained the same thing over here. If it is about increase, then it would have been a left tail test. And now second step, 
level of significance. Why did I take alpha by 2? Because it is a two-tailed test. And the delta value is 0 here. And just like before, xi, yi, I found d bar, sd, and t calculated. And remember, it is a two-tailed test. And in a two-tailed test, you are supposed to mark the tabulated value on both sides. So that is what happened. And remember, rejection region will be the tail part. So this is the rejection region. And that is it. Nothing much to explain. So we accept H0. Okay, I will show you one more question. You can work out that question. So the following are the average weekly losses of worker hours. Remember, worker hour in a factory means the, what do you call, let us say a factory works 10 hours every day. And let us say they are employing uh, 20 people in the factory. So the worker hour per day will be 200. So remember, working hours and worker hours are different. So one worker will work for 10 hours. That means 20 workers will work for 200 hours. Um, and that means even if, uh, let's say there was some incident or a, what do you call, let's say one hour waste. Actually, the company is losing 20 hours. If work is stopped for one hour, the company is not wasting one hour. It is wasting 20 worker hours. Okay, now let's go back to the question. So, uh, due to accidents, the company is losing the worker hours. And then, because the company is losing, they provided a safety program. And the safety program was put into operation. And they have the census how many hours they lost before and after in one company, another company, like that, like that, like that, like that. And they want to check whether the safety program is effective. Okay, now I am going to write the alternative hypothesis. Mu x means before, mu y means after. Now look at this, we are talking about the damage here, the loss, the number of worker hour being lost. So if the safety program is effective, the loss will be yeah, before they were losing 45 hours, now they are losing only 36 hours. So tell me, which one should be bigger if the safety program is effective? Yeah, it should be like this. I will repeat once more. Safety program is effective means they will lose less number of worker hours. Long back they used to lose 45 hours, they used to lose 73 hours. Now, if their program is effective, now it should be less. That means the previous value should be bigger. So, the null hypothesis of course will be mu x uh, less than or equal to mu y or in the standard format of the uh, paired t test, we can write mu d less than or equal to 0 and mu d greater than 0. Of course, it is a right tail test. Uh, I want you to try the question by yourself and I will wind up this video right now. And in the next video, we will go to question number 11 and that we will learn two proportion testing. I will repeat, in the next video, we will learn two proportion testing. So, I will be back soon. So, if you like these videos, please do share with your friends. Okay, so we'll meet very soon. Till then, bye.